entrance of the UN headquarters. You can see behind me. Last weekend, Gabby and I went to New York City to speak at the United Nations. We were invited by the Ibrea Foundation to attend and present at their annual Youth Leadership Conference. I'm here at the United Nations and in just a little bit, I'm going to be speaking about Brain Education TV and social media and YouTube and how we can use this as a positive catalyst for change for creating peace in the brain. This year's theme was about creating peace in the brain, which I think is a really important topic to discuss right now, considering all that's going on in the world. Like us, the Ibrea Foundation works to spread brain education in the US and worldwide. They're a nonprofit created by Ilchi Lee, and they work directly with the United Nations. This collaboration was especially exciting for me because we got to connect with the youth about mental health and how to use their brain to create health, happiness, and peace. I remember how much I struggled with my thoughts and emotions when I was in high school. So spreading our message to this age group has special meaning for me. There were high school students from South Korea and Harlem in New York City who attended, as well as three teachers from El Salvador who had experienced brain education through Ibrea Foundation's work in their country. It was a global gathering of people who had either experienced brain education or wanted to learn more about it. On the first day, we got to visit the South Korean mission, U.S. mission, and Germany mission. We're in line to get in to the U.S. mission to the United Nations. A mission is kind of like a country's embassy that works with the United Nations. I learned during this trip that an embassy conducts diplomatic relations between country to country, but a mission conducts diplomatic relations from a country to the U.N. as a whole. The representatives at each mission shared their country's goals and answered our questions about their country's politics, socioeconomic status, or just any random question we had in general. I asked the rep from the U.S. mission about a day in the life of a diplomat, and she basically said it was a bunch of meetings and negotiations to lobby other diplomats to agree with your bill. Then we heard some presentations from doctors about mental health. Gabby even presented about her tips for using social media wisely for the young generation. She was asked to do it last minute, but she took it like a champ and presented an awesome speech. The UN building is like a big museum that showcases their efforts and the people they touch around the world. So this right here is an exhibit of different women across the world and their dreams and aspirations. So let's walk through them because some of them are so inspiring. A Syrian refugee in Iraq. She's from Nepal. My favorite vegetables are cauliflowers. It takes a lot of skill to grow good cauliflower, and that's a skill I don't have yet. I really hope to learn that in the future. She's a Syrian refugee in Iraq. People tell me breakdancing is just for boys, but it doesn't make any sense because I'm much better than them. <laughs> you can see her like breakdancer pose. <laughs> It really felt like a building where so many cultures came together to discuss and collaborate for ways to create more understanding and union. You can even hear so many languages being spoken throughout the hall and see many art pieces that were gifted to the UN from different countries. For the main event, we switched rooms to a bigger place. It was a panel presentation and discussion all related to creating peace in the brain going along with the event's main theme. Successful doctors from psychology attended the panel, and they all gave very compelling presentations about how the brain works. Grecia, one of the students who took brain education in El Salvador, 
shared about her experience and how it impacted her country. In a nutshell, El Salvador is a country that suffers a lot from gang violence. The teachers and students there carry a lot of trauma from their parents getting killed by gangs or getting threatened by gang members. Brain education through the Ibrea Foundation's work has helped them manage and release their trauma through mind-body exercises like meditation and yoga. It was so inspiring to hear directly from a student who has witnessed both the violence in El Salvador and the positive impact of brain education on herself and her people. Now, brain education is being taught to about a quarter of all public schools in El Salvador. And the president of El Salvador even awarded Il Chile with an award that's equivalent to their Presidential Medal of Freedom. I was the last one to give my speech. My topic was about how to create peace in the brain related to social media. I see a real problem these days of young people feeling more lonely and depressed than ever. And when I asked myself, how could this be in an age where we are more connected to each other than before? The answer I get is how we use social media. Here's an excerpt from my speech about this topic. So what feeds your brain? Information. Information. Yes. So if you imagine every single visual thing you see on social media as food for your brain, do you know what kind of main images are on social media now that you the young people respond to? Can you imagine what would happen to the brain if you are exposing your brain to hours, days, months, years, decades to this kind of information, what that would do to your brain. Can you imagine? Young people now are more lonely than ever. And young people are more depressed than ever. And isn't that kind of ironic? We're more connected now than we were 50 years ago, and yet people are more lonely now than ever. And I believe a big part of that, and a big part of why people are anxious these days, is because we are not aware of the consequences of the social media that we consume that seems so friendly, that seems so attractive, that seems so entertaining, but we are actually poisoning our brains. On the last day, we got a tour of the Harlem Brain Center that the Ibrea Foundation operates in Harlem. It was a very cozy space with a training hall, healing room, and brightly lit reception. They had a party for us there to celebrate the successful closing of the event. Of course, the party included stretching and doing some brain education exercises. Each student was awarded a certificate of completion, and Gabby's mom was especially recognized for making a donation to the Ibrea Foundation to help them build a peace institute in El Salvador. The event was a success, and we got such positive feedback from people, especially the youth who were in attendance, and that was the most touching for me personally above all. We hope to inspire the youth to take back their brain and learn from a young age that they don't have to be the victims of their environment and can create health, happiness, and peace by learning to use their brain better. If you want to get involved in that project too, I'll link the site in the description below. We are so excited to collaborate more with the Ibrea Foundation to bring brain education to more people worldwide. Brain education has touched the lives of so many, including ours. And honestly, the journey started with just a simple desire for us to improve our lives using our own power. If you have that desire to become better using the power of your own brain, I invite you to join us and the Ibrea Foundation to experience brain education and get started on your own journey to physical, emotional, and mental healing. Love you all!